And now I'd like to uh, introduce Stephen Mayer, who is the son of William Mayer, who you've heard his music earlier. And um, I want to first apologize because I asked him to do something that I didn't give him any time to prepare for. Uh, both he and his father were involved with the Musicians Club in eras before most of us were involved with the Musicians Club. Uh, in 1973, he was the winner of what is now the Serge and Olga Kusevitsky Young Artist Awards. Um, in 1972, before he had won that award, he had already given a concert for the Musicians Club. In the 80s, his father was on the board of the Musicians Club, and uh, he performed uh, several concerts, uh, one of which was a, a memorial for one of the real icons of our club, Olga Kusevitsky, who was not only the president for 15 years, but also endowed the, the club with money, and trusted the club with money to have her uh, competition uh, continue. And she believed in the club that much that we've, we've been able to, to sort of ride that money until a few years ago, and now we're on our own. But uh, in any event, uh, I've asked him to bring us home with uh, some uh, music of his father's, but also if he would please give us a few words um, about the Musicians Club. I've had the, uh, the privilege of uh, curating you know, and, and, uh, and holding and looking through uh, all of the, the records of the Musicians Club that we have. And uh, you know, I noticed their names many years ago. And so it is it's really uh, an, an honor to have you here and to perhaps hear anything that you might be able to say, but also to hear your beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for coming today. And I guess we've heard some wonderful music and wonderful performances, and I'm very honored to be here. I'd say a few words first about my dad. Um, it was exactly two years ago today that he passed away. And um, in each succeeding year, and actually probably I should say even month, it's a little bit like when you walk away from a mountain and you don't notice it so much when you're up close, but you get more and more distant and you see <coughs> contours and you see something substantive on the horizon. On many levels, that's how I feel about my dad. Um, I think he was an amazing guy and left some very beautiful things in this world. And um, if I could just sum it up quickly, you can't really do that with a person who's lived a long and complicated life and done many things. but. There was a kind of combination of warmth and complexity uh, and very high intelligence about him and uniqueness. And some of it is expressed in his music. Some of it you had to know if you knew him. But in me, it's probably one of my most important memories that from the very beginning, there was an optimism and a kind of love that he showed that carried on throughout his entire life and something that he gave to others. I'll segue quickly into the Musicians Club. I actually met Olga Kuspitsky a number of times. I didn't know her well. She was a diminutive woman. I was saying earlier to somebody here that she reminded me of perhaps when I met her somebody who could have been in the Ballet Russe um, in 1920 in Paris. Uh, a beautiful Russian lady who looked so aristocratic. And she would make an appearance often before concerts. And you knew she was someone special. It wasn't just that she had been married to Serge Kuzovitsky. It was that she had an authority about her. As I said, I didn't know her well. But what I can say is that the Musicians Club and the opportunities it gave us as young performers was terribly important because 
Many of you know this, of course, but it's worth saying. When you're starting out, and when you're actually continuing as a performer, it's very easy to lose track of the fact that you're giving something unique and beautiful to the world because you're in a field which is so competitive that it is very easy to become daunted and to lose heart. And the encouragement that people like Ole Kukusvitsky gave, and I'll also mention Brian was nice enough to reprint several programs of concerts that I played for the club, the name Robert Sherman. Uh, another name I'd like to mention today is Catherine Luning in the audience, who actually arranged a concert for me in Spence School when I was 15 years old. And my teacher at that time, Herbert Stesson, said, let's not dispense with your concert at Spence, <laughs> <laughs> which meant get practicing. <laughs> the encouragement that the Musicians Club has given so many musicians is unique and it is really very touching for me to see that I go back in history that far for them, and they were around long before, and they will be around for a long time. So with that, I would like to play a few short pieces by my dad. I'm going to add a piece because the little pieces mentioned in the program are simply so brief that I don't want you to feel like I was just too skimpy. So I'm going to play the first movement of a piano sonata preceding that, that my father wrote when he was a Mattis student. And I can even remember in 1960 when I was about eight years old that he would play a little bit of it for me on the recording by William Masellos. And I remember asking him, is this piece as hard as the Samuel Barber piano sonata? because that was, and still is, one of the most famous piano sonatas by an American. And he said, yes, it's just equally that difficult. <laughs> and I was so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> this is also called Fantasia. He later named it that because I had the habit of playing it separately from the rest of the sonata. And then I'll proceed directly into uh, several short selections. The first one will be Subway in the Sunlight, which was a piece that he wrote to be at an intermediate level that kids could play after four or five years. And it referred to that little place in the Broadway subway line where at about 120th Street, the subway comes up above Columbia University and it peaks out at 125th Street, and then it goes back in before the 137th Street station. And when I started the Juilliard Prep School at the age of 12, I would take that subway, and I would always look over and think, wow, Juilliard. <laughs> the second piece will be a piece I loved playing from the very early time called The Aging Troubadour. As my mom has mentioned, my father was always keenly aware of time passing. And even though he was young when he wrote it, I think he kind of imagined that if all went well, he would one day himself be an aging troubadour. And indeed he was. The third piece, very brief pieces, but quite evocative, I think, Cold of the Moon, which maybe he didn't write at our family place up in Springfield, Vermont, but I think of it when I play the piece. I think of staring at the moon in a December night when it's high in the sky, and I think that the sounds of this piece really evoke that feeling. Finally, another side of my dad, which if you knew him, was quite apparent. He had a wonderful sense of humor and he particularly liked unusual animals, and he called this piece Rude Bird. <laughs> so, uh, pieces by William Mayer.